hands across the sand and it is an international day of action to come together to say no. No to deep sea drilling in our great Australian bite and yes to clean renewable energies. Well, this is an international day of, day of awareness in terms of offshore oil pushing into riskier and riskier locations and putting the coastlines of the world at risk. In Australia there are events happening all over, in South Australia, in New South Wales, Tasmania, etc. They're all over Australia and, and the, the key issue for Australia at the moment is BP pushing into the pristine waters of the Great Australian Bay. One of the most significant whale nurseries in the world. You know, it is utterly inappropriate to be coming off the back of the Gulf of Mexico disaster straight into one of the most significant whale nurseries in the world off the southern Australian coast and we're raising awareness about that issue. <laughs> asking for a long time now to see any oil spill modelling, uh, to see any emergency planning, in other words how they're going to deal with a scenario like the Gulf of Mexico and as yet that has not been forthcoming. Um, so you know the actual risk of what's being potentially imposed on the people of southern Australia is not being made clear. So we're calling for all of that information to be put forward as part of consultation that this company has to do in order to get these approvals with the community, recording for this information to be released immediately. So who were the victims of the Deepwater Horizon disaster? One oil rig. I'm sure that BP never expected to lose an oil rig and I'm sure they never imagined that oil would continue to spew out into the ocean for nearly three months, which is obviously nothing like the spill modelling that they're talking about. Eleven fathers, sons, men who expected to come home after work never did. Quotes from the National Geographic, more than 8,000 birds, sea turtles and marine mammals were found injured or dead in the six months after the spill. More than 900 bottlenose dolphins dead, that represented 17% of the population and many more are still dying from toxic effects today. Dolphins on the Louisiana coast were found dead at four times historic rates in 2014 and there is increasing evidence that these ongoing deaths are connected to the oil spill. 6,104 dead birds in the first few months alone. Loons, birds that winter on the Louisiana coast are carrying increasing concentrations of toxic oil compounds in their blood. 500 dead sea turtles have been found in the spill region every year since 2011. Unknown though is how many sea turtles died at sea and were never recovered by the scientists. Sperm whales that swam near the BP well have higher levels of DNA damaging metals in their bodies than in the past. What would the effect be on our pristine fishing industries? Is it worth the risk? I say no. Today I've highlighted only a glancing view of the overall effects, not to mention all of the ongoing suffering today for victims, families, businesses, tourism, coastal and ocean communities, both human and animal. Our Sea Shepherd crew of Operation Toxic Gulf have been there conducting scientific research post this disaster. Although the immediate effects of the oil and the dispersant were obvious, Massive amounts of oil soiling the Gulf beaches, thousands of birds covered in oil, countless fish and marine mammal deaths. The chronic effects are unknown and still somewhat unstudied to this day. So in closing, I say to you all and your families and your families' families, the likelihood of another disaster may be low. The consequence we already know is high. So are you willing to risk it all? Thank you. concerned about what this means to our southern Australian coastlines. I mean, if something goes wrong here, it will be a disaster. It'll be a disaster. In the Gulf of Mexico, with the entire industrial hub of the oil industry, it took 87 days to shut that off. Six and a half thousand boats or something were involved. 40,000 people. You know, where are the resources in Australia to mobilise, you know, a disaster management strategy on that type of scale? It just doesn't exist. You know, we're talking some of the, the roughest deepest, most remote waters on the planet. And these oil companies, it appears, you know, are willing to go in there and run those risks, yet the people that are going to carry that risk are the people of Southern Australia. Oh.
It's my absolute privilege to stand here as a South Australian Senator, as your South Australian Senator, and say I will stand up with you to say no to big oil and gas in the Bight and off Kangaroo Island. It's so good to see so many people willing to come along today and stand up and be counted. And I've been noticing there's big people and there's little people. For my role as a politician and a member of the federal parliament, there are few things that are more important than ensuring that we have an environment ongoing that will sustain us and allow us to thrive. And not only us, but other species like the beautiful, amazing marine species that we have in the Bight and off Kangaroo Island. So thank you for coming along today. The Australian Greens are standing with you. Our view is that we should not be putting our amazing coastlines in this predicament. We need to be protecting these areas for the future. The last thing we need to be doing is opening up more oil fields. In 2015, when we know full well that we can't even burn the amount of oil already on the books of these oil companies without you know, basically destroying the climatic future for the next generation. So every aspect of this proposition is, you know, is really not on. Oh.